Hey guys, what is up? How's it going? Coming at you with round, not round, top eight from Roanoke Regionals. Uh, round 11 was not a very good uh, match, and then they didn't stream the other round. So here we are all the way into top eight uh, from round 10. Unfortunately, there was not much to review um, in the day two. Uh, but here we are with top eight. We got uh, Chrissy Akala playing uh, Blounds. Uh, Naganadel Blacephalon versus Jimmy playing the Swampert Gardvor, Solgaleo, Ninetales deck, um, big stage twos. Um, I think this matchup is slightly favored for Guardi, but only slightly. Um, really depends on the first, the, the early turns if Guardi can really get uh, start ramping up. Um, also, if Blacephalon can put on like early pressure, because if they can't, then the Guardi deck will be able to set up fine. Um, yeah, I do favor the Guardi deck just slightly, um, just maybe 55-45. Um, not, yeah, definitely not heavily favored. Uh, so we have Chris going first, uh, Ultra Space plus Treasure, get rid of Fire, gets two Void Bulls. I see a, I see a, uh, Sophocles in hand. It looks like he is going with the Sophocles, getting rid of a Guzma and something else. I don't, I didn't see what he kept. Um, looks like maybe Energy Switch. Um, and then we have the Treasure, get rid of Fire, I assume for Let Loose Marsh Shadow. Yep, there it is, Let Loose. Um, trying to make Jimmy's turn one a little bit worse, and then he... Doesn't even have a draw supporter in his hand, so it's definitely worth it to try and uh, make it so Jimmy's hand, uh, or is it has a less explosive turn one. Um. <clears throat> so they're gonna be draw shuff <laughs> shuffling up here, uh, drawing four each. Um, so this is definitely something you want to do. Try and do whenever you go first as the Blissephalon deck, get off the turn one, let loose, um, whether it's before or after your draw supporter. As long as it, it works with the hand, you wanna. Really want to try and use that to your advantage. Um, looks like there's the pass from Chris over to Jimmy. Um, can't really tell. I see at least, okay, Ralt's Fairy. And then he's going to Ultra Space, check his deck. I probably should have done that before benching the Ralt's and the Fairy if he was going to do that before doing anything else. Uh, but it's fine. Uh, especially if he has like a Cynthia or a Lily in hand. His, his turn is already planned out up to this point. So it doesn't really matter too much that he didn't do it before benching the Ralt's and touching the energy. Um, yeah. Not a huge deal. Shuffling up here. I think it's probably going to be a Lily uh, from Jimmy if he has a supporter with all that shuffling. Nope, it's going to be the pass from Jimmy. So, uh, terrible start here from Jimmy. Uh, at least he got another Ralton play. Uh, we're going to see two Naganadels. A great, great, a solid turn one followed up by a solid turn two here from Chris, though. Um, we see two Naganadels and now two Blacephalon in play for him. He's probably just going to go for the knockout on this Ralt, I would imagine. Um, if he can get it. Um, to just pressure Jimmy and then try and close out the game as fast as possible. Maybe not. We'll see. I can't imagine you wouldn't. You get the two energy on the bench Naganadels. Discard one off the active. One off one of the bench Naganadels. Yeah, definitely. Just take the knockout. Um, start cruising from there. Jimmy draws. Um... <coughs> Yep, 40 damage, hoping Chris doesn't have a fire energy. There's the fire. So we already see Chris taking game one super fast uh, right out the gate. Uh, only a three-turn game. Um, and that's the power of the Let Loose Marsh Shadow. Uh, Chris's deck, uh, the way the decks are built, Chris's deck can handle being let loose to four way better than Jimmy's can. Um, and we see it working uh, the, way, the way he wants it to in game one. Um, going into game two now. Jimmy going first. Opens the Cosmog, not ideal, uh, but he does have the raw elm there. He gets the ditto Mudkip, Ralts, uh, and then the Brooklyn Hill will probably grab him a Vulpix here. Yep, there's the Vulpix, so that's what you want. Ideally, turn one from Gardvor is four Pokemon on your bench, four your good Pokemon on your bench. Um, usually you want one of them the active and then four, so five total. The Cosmog isn't great in this matchup, or the Sogalio is not great in this matchup, um, so that's a little meh. But besides that, everything uh, is looking good for Jimmy. Um, I, can't, I don't see the rest of his hand, but I'm assuming it's not terrible. I'm assuming he's got something going on. Um, hopefully, at least. <clears throat> the Ralts, the Vulpix. Or the Ralts, the Mudkip, the Ditto. All ready to go. Definitely wants to attach somewhere and decides to go with the active. I like that as well. Because um, you don't really re know where you want your next energy attachment to be, depending on your top deck, possibly, from Jimmy. So I like the attach, just the active, make sure it can move. Um, you know, Chris can't knock out your active, um, or he's probably not going to Guzma around it for the turn. Um, so this is fine here from uh, Jimmy. 
He goes ahead and attaches the beast energy immediately. I don't like that from Chris. I think you should definitely try and save the beast energy to help you knock out like a guardy later on in the match or something like that. So I don't like this beast energy attachment here from Chris. Um, or even to knock out a Swampert for three energy instead of four. Yeah, I really, really actually don't like the beast energy attachment here from Chris. Um, yeah, not a, not a big fan of the beast energy attachment for sure. I would like to have seen him to shuffle that back in the deck, look for a fire. I think he had a fire in hand before he sent the end. Um, so yeah, I would like to have seen him put down the fire. Let's see There's the first GX from Chris. Uh, what's the fire energy? Uh, Jimmy starts off immediately with the Brooklyn Hill. I expect to see second Mudkip here. Um, you do want to ideally set up two Swampert in this matchup as the Nine Tails player. Um, go ahead and attach his energy to a Ditto, which will most likely become a Vulpix. Um, and then there's the Beacon from Jimmy. I would assume we're going to see a Nine Tails and a Swampert here. Yep, there they are. Uh, Swampert is a, the first thing you always want to set up in this deck um, as it allows you to draw to the rest of the stuff and set up the rest of your board. Um, so I guess the, the beast energy is going to work out here for Chris. I still would have liked to have seen him save the beast energy, but it's going to work out here for Chris. Um, he can attach a fire and then discard uh, just one energy to get the knockout here on the nine tails. It won't matter too much because uh, the Vosephalon is most likely going down to a nine tails on Jimmy's next turn with the subli sublimation GX uh, attack. Um, so it won't matter too much. Um, and actually Chris's hand might be dead besides uh yeah chris's hand is dead, is dead besides him being able to go naganado uh and attach active so now this this game looks like it might be fast over in jimmy's favor there's red candy swampert um i see the nine tails in hand uh he's gonna start with the trading away of the max potion or the power drawing away of the max potion uh ideally i think here from jimmy we just want to see second swampert uh just draw more cards from there you, the more cards you draw the more easy it is to set up everything else but if you set up a guardy first it's harder to set up a swampert or a second guardy as a follow-up uh we see ultra ball timer ball here from jimmy uh timer ball first it's like one heads maybe that was a tails tails uh so it looks like one heads i think and he's ultra ball as well i'm not sure what he's gonna grab here uh, if he's another red candy in hand going for the marsh stomp makes sense ultra ball get rid of Vul vulpix brooklet it looks like uh probably for curlia i would imagine uh, going for Lele, so he doesn't have a draw support in hand, I guess. Yeah, so he's going to get the Cynthia uh, attached to, yeah, Choice Band to Swampert. That's where you want him, so they can one shot Blacephalons. And then Fairy Energy on the active. Um, and we should see the Sublimation coming out at the end of Jimmy's turn here to knock out the uh, Blacephalon. And then from there, he's looking for a follow up. And with Chris not playing anything on his last turn, he's going to need a whole bunch of stuff to one shot this Ninetales. And then if the next Blacephalon is one shot after that, uh, the game is pretty much sealed up at that point because he just doesn't have enough energy to keep up with stuff anymore. Uh, Candy Guardy from Jimmy. So super strong <laughs> Cynthia there. And then there's a sublimation for two prizes from Jimmy. Uh, the Ganondale sent up here from Chris. Bench. Poiple, uh plays a beast ring. Um, and this is not looking great for Chris. Uh, he didn't top deck anything that's going to get him out of here, I don't think. Second beast ring gonna go to a poipal. Once again, not great. That's not where you want your energy. You do not want your energy on your Naganadels. You want them on your Blacephalons or your beast rings on your Blacephalons most of the time. Um, especially your first two beast rings. Uh, yep, and it's just gonna be Chris attacking for 110 into the Nine Tails, which is no good for Chris. Um, Jimmy definitely gonna be looking to one shot this Naganadel, get the energy out of play. Um, we'll see if he can get there. Um, starting off with an Ultra Ball. I assume he's just going to set up the second Swampert here. We'll see, though. Ditches Guardy. Curlia keeps a Ralt. I think he probably has... He must have his fourth or candy there at that point. There we go. Grabs the Swampert. Um, nothing else really to grab with Ultra Ball. So Ultra Balling before Power Draw makes sense. Unless he was trying to avoid discarding some of the things. But at this point, you're so far ahead. And all you really need is Swampert to close out the game at this point. Um, Super Boost. Uh, definitely something he would like to find as well. Um, so he either wants to see DCE Fairy knock out this Naganadel or... Um, yeah, so he's just like, committing to probably not seeing up another Guardy this whole game. Maybe set up this Galio. Second Swamper comes down. Should see another power draw coming in. Yep, get rid of an Elm. One, two, three. Uh, there's the super boost. So I think we'll see the retreat. Oh, he's going to go ahead and commit it to the Guardy. Okay, interesting. Like I said, it's probably a little bit better than the, uh, the Swamper. Just use the Guardy to kill the Naganadels. And then if uh, Chris is able to set up another Blacephalon, switch it in, switch into the um, Swamper to KO that. Um, um, yeah. Definitely, I think, want to do it like this before. Because if Chris is able to ever knock out a stage 2 Pokemon and play, then you just can't use the Super Booster. Just get the value out of it right now. Um, there we go. We see Chris scoops Game 2 pretty fast um, as well. So this top eight is going by super fast. Um, 
and we're gonna already get into game three. Chris going first. Ultra Space and Treasure, same start as his game one. Uh, Poiple, then Ultra Space for Blacephalon. All right, let's see if he's got anything. There's the Let Loose Mar Shadow. So here we go again with the Let Loose. Um, looking, uh, Jimmy just hoping that he doesn't dead draw here. Um, ideally wants to get a Vulpix into the active this turn and get the beacon off. Uh, Chris ideally wants to find Lily here, but any draw supporter is, he'll probably be content with any draw supporter. Um, so here we go. One, two, three, four. Each player, I see a Cynthia on Chris's side as well as another Blacephalon. So I expect, yeah, bench Blacephalon, play Cynthia. All he really wants here, for sure off of the Cynthia, is uh, at least a fire energy. Um, and then from there, doesn't really matter as much. You want to get every energy attachment and play every turn with the Blacephalon deck. And playing 16 to 17 energy, you're hoping to always get that. There's the fire energy, and then over to Jimmy. <clears throat> I see an Ultra Ball here from Jimmy, so he's not out of the game. Um, Ultra Ball. Gonna find Lele, probably for Lily. Um, the Lily is very nice. Protection against stuff like the Let Loose. Yep, Lele for Lily, there we go. So he's not out of it, and he's gonna get a decent draw here. I think he has another Rolts in hand. Um, so yeah, far from out of it here for Jimmy. Probably just checking his prizes. One of the most important things to check in this matchup is to check your Swampert line. Uh, make sure it's in there. Uh, or you, you, what, what, what do you have access to for Swamperts? Ideally, you wanna set up both Swamperts in this matchup. Specifically, um, really good in all matchups, but this matchup is a, it's a little bit better than most because the Swampers can actually knock out stuff for pretty convenient uh, resources. Just the choice DC fairy, although it might seem like a lot, it's really not too much to set up yet. There's another roll. I'm actually curious to see what the last card in his hand is because I really like keeping the Ultra Ball actually if he could. But I don't know what the last card in his hand is, so um, it's hard to tell um, for sure um, if I would like to have seen him Ultra Ball that away over the other thing. Um, so here we go, Brooklyn Hill. I expect to see a Vulpix out of this for Jimmy. And I'm, then I'm just curious to see um, if he retreats to the Vulpix and Beacons, um, knowing that his Vulpix could get knocked out, or if he's going to go ahead and just leave it on the bench. Nope, there's the retreat to Vulpix. Beacon. Uh, he would really like to see a second Vulpix or the Ditto ideally in play to make sure, I mean, to make sure this Vulpix doesn't get knocked out. Or even if this Vulpix does get knocked out, he's still able to set up a Ninetale. So I expect Guardy Ninetales here from Jimmy. Oh, going with Guardy Curlia. All right, I'm curious as to see what his hand is then. No, take, not going for the Ninetales at all. Grabs Guardy Curlia. Um, yeah, super curious with that one. Um, suggests that his hand is actually just very, very good, but we'll see soon. Draw here from Chris, the Heat Factory into the Cynthia. Um, so not a whole, I mean, getting the Heat Factory out is great, but not a whole ton coming out of that hand besides those two cards. I mean, nothing coming out of his hand besides those two cards. Not a whole ton coming out of the hand in general, I guess is what I want to say. Um, definitely would like to see more cards overall be played down. Uh, but with the Heat Factory, still have the potential to do quite a bit. Definitely wants to KO this Vulpix, I think, if you are Chris. To sh stop the Ninetales. Don't let him get out the Ninetales if possible. Um, but he needs a Naganadel, and then uh, he has the Energy Attachment in hand, but he needs a Naganadel if he wants to uh, knock it out this turn. I don't see a way for him to get the Naganadel in hand. I don't think he's going to be able to. I think it's going to be a Retreat and Burst GX here from Chris, which is super unfortunate because you play so many ways to find a Ganadel. But he does rip the energy for the Burst GX, so that's a reasonable trade-off, I think, there. Um, so Jimmy had the Ninetales in the hand the whole time. That's why I didn't search it off. Makes sense. Actually, I didn't really think about that one. Oh, what if he just has the Ninetales in hand? Going to be able to get double Rare Candy here into Candy Swampert, Candy Guardy, Evolve to Curlia, and probably will be able to Sublimation GX this uh, Blacephalon. Um, pretty easily this turn. Finding two energy is not really a problem for a guard for deck. If the guardy to get the secret spring on, and then you need any kind of attachment to get the knockout. Uh, there's a lotto. There's a fairy energy. It's a fairy energy <coughs> into hand. Um, yeah, and I expect, I definitely expect this Blacephalon to go down, and then it's just gonna come down to what is Chris's response. Um, and then after that, what is Jimmy's response? These, these the responses have to be like super fast and super immediate um, to get. Uh, to be able to stay in the game. Um, it really is a really quick back and forth, big knockout after a big knockout matchup. Um, if one person whiffs, then uh, um, then then that can just be the game. Uh, so we see Jimmy get rid of the Lele. Um, Red Candy, there's the Red Candy Guardi, there's the Evolve to Curlia. Uh, I see at least one of the energies, but he needs two. Um, once again, super unfortunate that Chris wasn't able to KO the Vulpix, like I had said. Um, there's an Elm. It looks like he has the energies in hand. Just going to thin out the deck with the Elm. Ideally wants to set up the second Swampert. Uh, yeah, there's the Mudkip. I saw Marsh Stomp. I don't know about the, the third guy, the, the third Swampert, but... Um, 
<clears throat> I think no matter what, Jimmy will play for it. Um, as he's drawing two prizes now, maybe two, two prizes next turn, being able to set up the next second Swampert might not be um, too hard, even if it is prized. Uh, Secret Spring active, attach active. Yep, and that's what I was talking about. Uh, yep, goes with the Mudkip, so he's definitely looking to set up, like I said, the second Swampert line. Super nice to set up if you get a setup. And then GX attack, Blacephalon goes down. Once again, super unfortunate. Uh, Chris whiffed the knockout on the Vulpix. This game would have been completely different. Like I said, so many outs to the Naganadal, but unable to find it on that second turn and whiffs the knockout. Uh, the Heat Factory, um, all he wants is B strings here. I don't see any in his hand currently. Uh, ideally, wants two or three of them. One, two, three, four. I don't see any again. Once again, no. Uh, there's finally a treasure to get an Aganadel set up, but no B strings. And there's the potential for B string to be shut off on the next turn if Jimmy's able to get the knockout on this Blissephalon. Um, so Chris is in a very scary spot here if he's not able to, uh, I mean, KO this, but mo most importantly, get uh, in a very scary spot if Jimmy is able to get the KO out uh, next turn. Um, Ultra Ball here from Chris. Probably gonna get another Naganadel. Uh, gets rid of the Lily here. The Blissephalon and the Lily, that looks fine to me. Keeps the Guzma. Um, so he is gonna be able to get the knockout on the Ninetales, and it's gonna come down to if Jimmy can get the then get the knockout on the Blissephalon. Um, and if he can, I think the game that, that's where the game is pretty much over. Chris was not able to get any B strings out. Um, <clears throat> we'll just have no real follow up if uh, if this uh, this Blissephalon goes down and B strings get shut off. I was just thinking about benching the other Blissephalon. I definitely think he should, just in case one gets knocked out. You might want to use uh, the first attack on Blissephalon. I forget what the name is, but it burns and confuses them. Uh, Jimmy draws. There's the super boost energy immediately. So all he really needs here is a Gardevoir, and then this Blissephalon is knocked out, and B-String is turned off, which is a huge swing uh, in Jimmy's favor. Um, Ditto comes down. Um, Marsh Stomp should probably... Mudkip should probably be evolved into Marsh Stomp there. I'm actually curious as to why Jimmy didn't evolve the um swampert in the marsh stomp i guess if he has both other candies left in the deck i guess this is reasonable to potentially set up the other candy swampert he should definitely easily be able to find a guard for here um there is the power draw for three there's an ultra ball so that will become a guard for oh he just has the guard for um i end up an ultra ball here now uh brooklyn hill comes out get rid of the heat factory definitely sounds good to me uh, so I expect Ultra Ball to come out here, no matter what, for Jimmy to be able to get the March Stomp out. Um, you want to have constant access to that power draw. There's a there's a Secret Spring. Maybe not though. Maybe he's not gonna go with it. It looks like he maybe has the Red Candy in hand, so maybe he could just do it next turn if he doesn't have anything to power draw away, as well as Ultra Ball for the Swampert. It makes sense to actually just uh, do the do the uh, the power draw here. Or the uh, to not candy it here. If you don't have enough stuff to Ultra Ball for the Swampert, candy it and then power draw away. If you're not gonna be able to do the power draw. I I understand waiting the turn um, for sure here from Jimmy. And this is what I was talking about. Maybe you want to be able to attack with the Blissephalon with the Confuse. Uh, but going to the Swampert, I guess probably not, right? Yeah. Energy switch up. It looks like he's gonna be able to hit the Swampert for 80 here on Chris's side, which is not a whole ton. It'll get one shot in return by the Swampert, or Jimmy could even retreat, save the Swampert, and just knock it out with a Gardevoir pretty easily as well. Um, I would take a miracle here for Chris to win this, and I actually don't know what that miracle would even look like at this point. I think this one's pretty much over. Uh, <clears throat> oh no, it is the knockout because he's at three prizes. All right, that's right, that's right. Um, yeah, I missed that. I missed that. That's right. When the Ganadel, when you have three prizes left and you attack when the Ganadel's turning point, it does 160. Okay, so Chris is actually still in this one. Um, I don't know where he's gonna be able to draw. The, the problem for Chris at this point is gonna be where is he gonna get his last two prize cards from? Um, He's got nothing set up as of right now. He's just going to have to set up a Blacephalon and hope it'll like stick a turn on the bench, probably attached to it and hope it sticks. Um, this turn, I don't think there's any way he can win. Um, this next turn from Chris. I don't think there's any way Chris can win. There's the Candy Swampert, finally. Um, power draw for three. <clears throat> there's the DC. He definitely needed that. That would have been a big whiff if Jimmy had whiffed that. Could definitely see Chris winning, it if, uh, winning this game if Jimmy had whiffed that. All right. Again, it all goes down another neck, and again, it all goes up. Jimmy's at one prize. Um, so Chris basically has to like bench a Blacephalon, um, attach to it, and then hope it doesn't get knocked out on the following turn. We see just a Guzma here from Chris to bring up the Swampert. Puts the energy on his active Naganadel, and I think he's going to be a pass. Yeah, Chris's hand is just not good. There's the Guzma from 
Jimmy, and Jimmy was a top four match. So super, super quick games. Um, went at, went about as I expected. Uh, in the third game, the first two games were just kind of uh, dead draw into dead draw. But game three, uh, it's, it basically comes down to if the guard four player after KO in the first Blissephalon can then immediately follow up and KO the next Blissephalon, shutting off B-String, only giving them one turn of B-String, and being like, okay, hit your B-Strings now. Oh, you didn't. You lose. Oh, you did. This could be tough. Um, if you're ahead on the prize trade still as a guardy player, um, you can still win, but it's pretty tough to like set up three one shots in a row on Blissephalons. Um, uh, but we saw in this one, Chris just hit zero B-Strings, which is unfortunate for him. So he's unable to chain KOs after that second KO there. Um, from Chris, uh, the Swampert knockout was super cute with the Nicanid out. I missed that, um, but yeah, that definitely just works in the prize trade there for Chris. But past that, he just had no way to knock anything else out. Um, and he had no way to even like if he had an energy, I'm sure he would have benched the Blissephalon and attached to it to try and set up for a knockout on the next turn. But he didn't even have that going for him. So uh, pretty rough game three as well there for Chris. Um, oh so yeah, that's gonna do it. Jimmy wins the top eight match. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you enjoyed the content, subscribe. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Check out my live stream on Twitch. Links for those in the description below. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.